The question is, do you need a form of dust collection with a CNC this size? The answer is, absolutely yes. Avid CNC provides vector VCAR files and an itemized list of parts you can buy to make your own dust shoe, which I did in this video. But would I do it again? Stay with me and find out. As I stated, Avid provides a detailed list of items to buy for this dust shoe build, but I could not acquire the exact same magnets that they used. This caused me to have to modify their design slightly, and because I'm fairly new to CNC, I did a test build using MDF before I cut into my more valuable HDPE plastic. The dust shoe has two halves. The top half connects to the spindle with a clamp and has a port for the connection of a 4-inch dust collection hose. The bottom half contains the brush and connects to the top half using M8 screws that attach to magnets in the top half. Once satisfied everything would fit properly, I mounted the HDPE plastic to this foil board and started the final dust shoe project. I began by cutting out the top piece that attaches to the spindle. Two holes are cut out of one inch plastic. One is an opening for the dust hose and one has a segmented lip to allow for some flexibility. This is the one that will slide over and be clamped directly to the spindle. Here I'm cutting the opening with a solid lip that will serve as the dust hose attachment point. The other side first gets a similar through cut. Now I'm making holes to hold the magnets. This is where I had to modify the file so the magnets I purchased would fit snugly into these holes. They're a slightly different size than the ones originally listed in the Avid list of items. Here you see the slots cut in the lip to give it more flexibility and allowing for the clamp to tightly secure the dust boot to the spindle. You can see I slowed the feed rate down for this cut. I learned in my MDF test that the normal feed rate caused these tabs to break off. It likely would not have happened while cutting through plastic, but I decided I'd rather be safe than sorry. Final step for the upper half is a profile cut on the outside. The lower half is pretty simple. First the center is completely removed.
I cut the profile out before I cut the groove for the brush. You can see I had a problem with my clamping system that I did address in my spoil board version 1 video. Luckily the piece was still usable. I reattached it with screws and completed the cut. I don't have it on video, but you can see holes are drilled to receive the threaded inserts that will hold these screws that attach the lower half to the upper half using magnets. And a profile cut completes the job. I now switch to a 1 8 inch bit to cut the groove for the brush. Now while cutting, this sounded horrible to me, but I double checked my feeds and speeds and it appeared I had everything correct. Luckily the bit did not break in, nothing melted, but if you have thoughts on this, please let me know in the comments below. Now it's just a matter of assembly. I first installed the brush. It is supposed to be a pressure fit and then the threaded inserts also push the walls of the groove inward to hold the brush in place. It was still slightly loose to me so I opted to add just a little glue for peace of mind. With the threaded inserts installed, M8 screws were put in place. You can see these protrude through the top of this piece as these screws are what connect to the magnets in the top half of the dust shoe. With the magnets in the top holes, it was ready to mount this to the CNC. So just for kicks, with the plastic mesh still on my CNC from cutting out this dust shoe project, I drove the machine back and forth manually just to test out the suction, and it seemed to be very effective. I then proceeded to surface my spoil board with a 2 inch surfacing bit. This was a step I chose not to do when I first installed my spoil board version 1. I wanted to wait until I finally had a dust shoe. As you can see, it did a great job. So although this build was successful, I have to honestly ask myself if I would do it again. Here's a breakdown of items I needed to purchase for this build. Two pieces of HDPE plastic, a brush strip, M8 fasteners, threaded inserts, and magnets. I already had clamps. Estimated total with shipping for all these items was about $100. A very good quality dust shoe ready to go would run you about $150 depending on where you purchased it. I enjoyed the process of making this, and yes, I would do it again. Avid provided a great design that is very functional. However, knowing what I know now, I do wish I would have had a dust shoe installed on this machine when I made my very first cut, because I did a lot of vacuuming prior to completing this project. So in hindsight, I probably would have purchased a ready-made dust shoe that I could have installed as soon as my machine was built. The value in this project for me was learning how to take a pre-existing design and successfully modify it to meet my needs. At this stage, any project I can cut out on the CNC is a chance for me to learn. So that's it for this video. I'm finally, more or less, dust-free when I'm running my CNC machine. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. 
and please subscribe so you can follow along as I continue to learn what I can do with this CNC. Now that I have the machine completely set up, it's time to start making some projects.